morning everybody department of triple franc zaver engineering college tirunelveli welcomes you all electrical and electronics engineering department was started in the year of 2002 the department is functioning with two pg courses such as powertronics and drives was started in the year 2011 and power system engineering was started in the year of 2013 We got recognized research center status from Anna University Chennai in the year 2017, and our department re-accredited by National Board of Accreditation, New Delhi from 2017. The department has a strong faculty strength who are committed and are specialized in various streams of electrical engineering. Also, we have DST, FIST supported advanced power electronics and drives laboratory, and National Instruments Powered Lab U Academy. Good morning to an all present here. It's my immense pleasure to welcome you all on this seminar session under the topic Basic Ideas of Mini Solar Plant. On this webinar is hosted by the Department of Triple E of FXEC. On behalf of our chairman Dr. S. Kritesh Babu, our managing director Mr. Arun Babu, our general manager development Dr. Jay Kumar and our below principal Dr. Veer Murugan and our hachuri dr p anapandi i welcome all the heads and faculties from various institutions and the alumni of fxcc my hearty welcome to our resource person mr k kasi rajan senior lecturer maza university malaysia he has a working experience of 20 years of teaching he has the member of iset and iet He published nine international journals and he attended six international conferences. Now I welcome Mr. K. Kazi Rajan to proceed his seminar. Good morning, all. I am Kazi Rajan, Kazi Pandian, working in Masai University, Malaysia, as senior lecturer in Faculty of Engineering and Built Environments. First of all, I would like to thank Masa University and FX Engineering College for giving me this opportunity to give you a webinar on important basic ideas of mini solar power plant. And also, I extend my thanks to my student Sobhana Raddi. Actually, nowadays we are in a crisis of power electrical power due to the diminishing nature of the fossil fuels definitely in future after certain years the fossil fuels will diminish completely so we have to go for alternate energy sources for example renewable energy sources lot of renewable energy sources are available one among them is solar yeah solar is abundant in nature isn't it so definitely we get more sunlight so with the help of the sunlight we can produce electricity how to generate the electricity by using photovoltaic cells that is solar panels in the solar panels we have the semiconductor materials like silicon materials so with the help of the silicon materials we can make the solar panels so in the solar panels we can convert the sunlight into electricity this sunlight hits the solar panels and it is converted to electricity the electricity nature is actually dc quantity but in our houses we are using the ac so we can convert the dc to ac with the help of inverter circuits so solar energy is converted into electrical energy now there is some terms solar cell solar module and solar string after that solar array solar cell is actually a small part it produces very less voltage nearly half voltage only and the cells are connected to produce the module the module 
can generate up to 50 volts 5 amps then the, we can combine the modules to create the string if you connect modules in series we can get a string the string can produce electricity up to 1 kilowatt then the strings are connected in parallel to increase the current capacity so up to 5 kilowatt we can produce with the help of the solar array then what are the factors impact the energy output due to the atmospheric conditions lot of factors influencing the energy output those things are climate our weather and location where we located in some areas it is very hot in some areas very ice cool climate but india malaysia singapore we get more electric more solar power so we can convert the solar to electricity then high temperatures can reduce solar panel efficiency so for that we have to prevent from high temperatures what are the arrangements we can make then panel orientation shading if small shading also reduces the power production if your bed is sitting on a solar panel not only that part affects the efficiency other parts also connected in series with that part can get reduced so nowadays more research works are going on to increase that one how to eliminate those advantage disadvantage then natural efficiency drop so these are some factors influencing the energy output of your solar panel solar panel efficiency drops about 0.5 to 1 percentage every year sun hours actually what uh, we are saying sun hours what is sun hour mean time spent by the sun in your position that generate peak energy during other hours it produces very less power only so especially during sun hours only we will get peak energy and since we are your people are interested in solar we are having some 10 solar panels based on their efficiency they have classified 10th position dye sensitized solar cells its efficiency actually 11.9 to 12.3 percentage so these 10 solar panels are uh, 2019 2020 is mostly increasing in protection then ninth position organic solar cells its efficiency 15 to 6 15.6 to 17.4 percentage cadmium telluride cells its efficiency slightly increased compared to the previous one 22.1 percentage then in seventh question polycrystalline its efficiency 22.3 to 22.8 percentage sixth question thin film clgs cells actually it is a thin solar film its efficiency 22.9 to 23.4 percentage fifth position unstabilized peroxide cells this its efficiency 23.7 to 25.2 percentage fourth question mostly we are using the monocrystalline cells so this one more efficiency 26.1 percentage and its question is four third question gallium arsenide cells its efficiency 30 percentage these things are growing nowadays tandem peroxide cells its efficiency 28 percentage uh, and in second position then the uh, first position multi-junction solar cells so this is most wanted one but still research is going on its efficiency maximum 39.2 percentage 
then PV system design criteria. Actually, you are interested to design a sol mini solar plant in your house. So for that, these five factors we have to consider after your energy auditing. So first, you have to determine the power consumption demands, how much you require. Based on your energy auditing, you can uh, determine. Then we need to size the PV modules based on your requirements. Third one is inverter sizing. So what inverter rating is required for your design? That is very important. Inverter is actually converting the DC, DC to AC. Since our home appliances are using AC power. Then battery. Battery sizing, we need to size your battery. For example, if you need for two or three days of autonomy of energy, then based on that, you can design the battery. So it can come for two or three days based on your design. Then solar charge controller sizing. So these are the very, very important factors that influence your mini power plant design. So if you consider these factors, then you can easily install or design your solar power plant in your house. In future, all the whole world go for solar since the energy is abundant. First one, determine power consumption demands. It is required to find the total power and energy consumption of all the loads that is supplied by the PV system in your house. Then calculate the total watt hours per day for each appliance. So for each appliance, how many uh, hours required for operation? So total watt hours you need to calculate. Then add the watt hours needed for all appliances together to get the total watt hours per day, which must be delivered to your home appliances. How to do this one? Calculate the total watt hours per day needed from the PV modules. So total watt hours per day provided by panels. So that is total appliances watt hours per day multiplied by 1.3 times the energy lost in the system. What is this 1.3? For safety reasons, we have to design for 130 percentage, not for 100 percentage, extra 30 we have to add. So 130 percentage we need to design. Second factor, size the PV modules. Practically different size of PV modules available and different size will produce different amount of power. So to find out the sizing of PV modules, the total peak watts produced is required. Then peak watts produced depends on two factors mainly two factors. One is size of the PV module, then climatic condition of your site. Now we have to consider panel generation factor, which is different in each site location. So panel generation factor we have to consider. For Thailand, the power generation factor is 3.43. So I have calculated based on this panel generation factor, 3.43. Total watt peak creating for PV panels needed to operate the appliances equal to the total watt hours per day needed for PV modules divided by 3.43, that is panel generation factor. So if you divide by this one, then you will get the total peak watt hour rating for PV panels. So, how many number of panels you require? For that one, the use, you have to use this formula. 
total watt hours per day needed for PV modules divided by 3.43 times rated output watt peak of PV modules available. For example, if the PV module rating is 110 watts, then you have to put the 110 watts for rated output watt peak of PV modules. Total watt hours per day you already calculated. So if you substitute these two values, can example I have taken 110 watts. In your, in your area, how much watts is available? Based on that, you can do the calculation. Result is the minimum number of PV panels. If more PV panels are installed, that will perform better and battery life will be improved. So for better performance and be better battery life, you will select more number of PV panels. For example, if it comes 3.4, 3.5, means you can go for four panels, not go for three panels. If you go for four panels, it will improve the battery life and good performance. If fewer PV models are used, may not work at all during cloudy periods and battery life will be shortened. Then comparison of PV models, it is better to make comparisons based on current information provided by manufacturers. Combined with the specific requirements of your application, that is models price per watt and rated power output per area or efficiency. So these are these factors you have to compare with other PV models for selecting the best one. Calculate cost per watt. Using this formula, you can calculate modules price over its rated output in watts. That will give you cost per watt. Then calculate watts per hour area. That is calculated by rated output over its area. So if you use this formula, you can find the watts per area. Then third fact, third fact is your inverter sizing. So how to design your inverter? Actually inverter converts DC to AC. The input rating should never be less than the total watt of appliances. Input rating should never be less than the total watt of appliances. The inverter must have some nominal voltage as your battery. <clears throat> For standalone systems, the inverter must be large enough to handle the total amount of watt you will be using at one time. The inverter size should be 25 to 30 percentage bigger than total watt of appliances for safety reasons. In case of appliance type is motor or compressor, then inverter size should be minimum three times the capacity of those appliances and must be added to the inverter capacity to handle surge current during the starting. So <clears throat> to for starting current, if the starting current is starting current normally for motor and compressor type of applications, it would be higher. So to handle that one, we need to design for three times that of your capacity for inverters. For grid type systems or grid connector systems, the input rating of inverter should be same as PV array rating. Input rating of inverter should be same as PV rating of to allow for safety and efficient operation. So for safe and efficient operation, you have to select the inverter rating as same as your PV array rating. Then fourth one, fourth one is actually the battery sizing for charging and discharging, you are using the batteries. It stores energy for supplying to electrical appliances. Battery type recommended for solar PV is deep cycle battery. So deep cycle battery, if you are using it, it, is, it gives the better performance. So specifically designed for to be discharged to low energy level and rapid recharge or cycle charge and discharge day after day for 
years. So for, it comes for long life. The battery should be large enough to store sufficient energy to operate the appliances at night and cloudy days. Days of autonomy, I, as already I told, days of autonomy, two or three days, we can normally uh, select for the days of autonomy. So if you include that factor for uh, designing of battery. So number of days that you need the system to operate when there is no power produ produced by the PV panels. So that is called the days of autonomy. Without the solar power, uh, we can use the battery. So battery capacity in ampere hours, total watt hours per day used by appliances, multiply by days of autonomy divided by 0.85 times, 0.6 times nominal battery. So nominal battery rating, you substitute that one, for example, 12 volts, then we can substitute that value to calculate the battery capacity in ampere hours. So a battery's depth of discharge indicates the percentage of the battery that has been discharged relative to the overall capacity of the battery. For example, if you have a Tesla power wall that holds 13.5 kilowatt hours and you discharge 13 kilowatt hour, then the depth of discharge is approximately 96 percentage. So for each and every batteries, we are having the DOD. So based on the DOD, you can select the record battery. So these are some batteries and its size in kilowatt hour and depth of discharge. For example, in-phase AC battery having 100% DOD. That is 1.2 means 1.2 we can discharge before recharge. So that is the maximum discharge capacity. So 84 percentage means only up to 7.2. So that is for Pika Energy Harbor plus battery. So based on the battery type, the DOD changes. Then last one is solar charge controller sizing. Actually, it is very important part of your solar panel. It is used to regulate the voltage and current coming from solar panel and voltage to the battery. It prevents battery from overcharging and prolongs battery life. So this is very important point and it regulates the battery charging. Select the solar charge controller to match the voltage of PV array and batteries. Identify which type of solar charge controller is right for your application. For example, we have the MPPT solar charge controller and PWM solar charge controller. So for small size uh, solar system, we can go for PWM. And if you're going for very big power rating, then MPPT is better, but slightly expensive compared with PWM. So for big size, it will be okay. Make sure that solar charge controller has enough capacity to handle the current from PV array. Sizing of the controller depends on total PV current, which is delivered to the controller and depends on PV panel configuration, whether you connected the PV panels in series or parallel. So it depends on PV panel configuration and total PV current delivered to controller depends upon these two factors. The sizing is of the controller is then according to standard practice, sizing of solar controller is to take the short circuit current of the PV array and multiply it by 1.3. That is for safety purpose, 30 percentage extra. So 130 percentage. So solar charge controller rating, total short circuit current of PV array. If you see a solar panel backside, in the, at the backside, they mention the short circuit current of PV array. 
if you short circuit the terminals of your uh, solar panel then that will give us the short circuit current so you can also check the short circuit current and you want to use the short circuit current times 1.3 to get the solar charge controller rating and see this is one photovoltaic model back side and here if you see the solar short circuit current short circuit current is is for this module 9.01 amps and under open circuit voltage open circuit voltage is 46.2 that is without any load without any load the panel open circuit voltage is 46.2 volt so, so short circuit current 9.0 amps 1 amps and where the apt is suitable in cloud cloudy conditions cold conditions far from equator wind at time 25 to 30 percent is more power we can get from mppt controllers so in this areas it is advised to use the mppt controllers so this is one example how i designed a mini solar power plant by considering the these five factors here in our house 18 watt fluorescent lamp with electronic ballast used for four hours per day so the watt rating is 18 watts and number of hours i consider four hours per day you can consider six hours or eight hours whatever you want you can consider then fan 60 watts fan i have taken i'm using two hours only two hours per day you can use 12 hours six hours based on your requirement you can select the number of hours then refrigerator its rating is 75 watts it runs for 24 hours per day with compressor but the compressor runs only for 12 hours and off for another 12 hours so only 12 hours is enough for calculation purpose no need to take all the 24 hours so 12 hours the system will be powered by 12 volt dc and 110 watt peak pv model so i have the solar panel its rating is 12 volt dc and 110 watt peak so for this type of solar panel i am going to design for these ratings for these ratings of electrical appliances i am going to design a solar power plant which consists of 12 volt 110 watt peak pv panel so how many pv panels of 110 watts required for this electrical appliances so that is my objective so i am going to determine how many panels required for these three electrical appliances of this much hours fluorescent lamp for four hours fan for two hours refrigeration for 12 hours and what rating so wattage as well as hours that if you having this two then you can design or you can calculate the watt hours total watt hours so from the total watt hours you can calculate the number of panels required for your mini power plants so fluorescent lamp 18 watts fan 16 watts refrigeration 75 watts so total watts 153 total watts 153 hours used per day so four hours for fluorescent lamp two for fan and 12 for refrigeration so if you multiply these two 18 times 4 that will give us you 
72 watt hours. Similarly, 60 times 2, 120. 75 times 12, you get 900. So total, you will get 1092 watt hours. So these two factors is required for our calculation. Total watt hours per day must be provided by panel is equal to total appliances watt per day. We have calculated total water 1092. So 1092 watt hour multiply by 1.3. 1.3 is nothing but 130 percentage. 30 percentage extra. So 1092 times 1.3 that will gives you total watt hours. So 1.3 for safety purpose. So 130 percentage. Second one number of panels. So first one is actually total watt hours. 1419.6 watt hours required. So for this watt hours, we are going to design the number of panels. So number of panels for the system equal to total watt hours per day needed divided by the panel generation factor 3.43 times rated output. Rated output is 110. 3.43 for Thailand and total watt hours per day 1419.6. So if you divide this one, you will get the total number of panel. It is required 3.7. So go for higher than that one. So four panels required. Four panels of 110 watts rating is required for our system. Now, how I have selected the 3.43? That is power generation hours normally. 5 to 6 hours, 5 to 6 hours. So I go selected 7.6 hours for Thailand. And how I can get 0.44? That is, see, power generation factor. Zero power generation at 8 a.m. at Thailand. 9 at 9 a.m. 25 percentage. So power generation increases from zero, zero percentage. Uh, morning 8 o'clock, zero. But at 12 p.m., 100 percentage we achieve. At 12 p.m., 100 percentage power generation. After that, it reduces 75, 50, 25, zero. I am adding all these factors. I am adding. All these factors and divide by uh, number of times. So total nine interval. So nine, and you'll get 0 0.44. So if you use this power generation factor, then you can calculate the panel generation factor 3.43. Okay. Then third one is inverter sizing. Inverter normally 25 to 30 percentage bigger than total watts of appliances. So 18 plus 60 plus 75 is 153 watts of appliances. This is total. Then inverter size 25 to 30 percentage bigger than. So 30 percentage I have selected. 30 percentage bigger than inverter size 198. Rated load divided by inverter power factor. Inverter power factor 0.8 means we get 191.25. So the inverter size should be between these two, 191 to 198 watts. Then fourth one is battery sizing. How to design battery rating? Battery capacity, total watt hours per day used by appliances times days of autonomy. So days of autonomy here, I took three, three days of autonomy and divided by 0.85 times, 0.6 times, 12 nominal. So battery voltage rating is 12. So I got selected the 12. And total ampere hours required is 535 ampere hours required for this system. 535 ampere hours. So battery should be rated 12 volt. We have to go for higher rating compared to this one. So in market, we are having 12 volts, 600 ampere hours available. So I, I have selected 12 volts, 600 ampere hours for 
three days of autonomy. And last one is the solar charge controller sizing. So peak hour, peak watt is 110 watts. Maximum voltage 16.7 volt DC. Maximum current 6.6 .6 amps. Open circuit voltage 20.7 amps. Sorry, 7 volt. Uh, short circuit current 7.5 amps. So solar charge controller rating four times four strings. Four strings is nothing but your number of panels. So four panels. Four times the short circuit current, 7.5 ampere is short circuit current times 130 percentage, that is 1.3. Then you will get the solar charge control rating is 39 amps. So nearer to that one is 40 amps. So I have selected the 40 amps, 12 volts for my design. So this is the solar charge control rating. Solar charge controllers still require lower voltages of 12, 24, or 48 volt to match the voltage of the battery stream. So 12 voltage, 12 volt I have selected. So result of this example, total of watt hours per by PV is 1420 watt hours. Number of panels required, four panels of 110 watt P. You can select any other uh, rating which is available in your near places. Inverter says 198 watts, battery says 12 volt, 600 amps, three days of autonomy, and solar charge control, 40 amps. So with these details, you can actually design your mini solar power plant. Some research idea I wanted to give, share to the participants. So comparison between the String inverters and micro inverters. Actually, uh, in olden days, now you are using string inverters. But in string inverters, lot of disadvantages. The entire system affected by one module. Susceptible to soiling, shading, and module defects. For example, leaf shading reduces its percentage to half leaf shading or bird shading so see bird sitting on this one it not only that part is reduced to 40 percentage from 90 percentage it reduced to 40 percentage but also other panels connected in series to that panel reduced to 40 percentage so all these panels connected in series with that shadow panel affected to affected by reduced to 40 percentage so the research scientists developed another inverter micro inverter all modules controlled independently so see here the shaded portion only reduced to 40 percentage but all other panels still having 90 percentage in case of micro inverters so all modules control independently resilient to environmental factors compared to string inverters its efficiency is increased by 20 percentage so 20 percentage efficiency is increased in case of micro inverters compared with string inverters so drawbacks of string inverters when a part of solar panel shaded then the output of the whole string is reduced to level of its weakest panel so level to weakest panel all efficiency is reduced each string must have equal number of solar panels have to be installed in a same angle and have to be same type that means if you are using monocrystalline means you have to use all the panels as monocrystalline you cannot go for polycrystalline or thin film technology we cannot go all the solar panels should have same uh, type then only we can get good efficiency or otherwise efficient performance will be reduced we cannot use small solar system can only affect it much in case of emergency the utility grid can be shut down but not the solar panel so due to some emergency conditions the utility grid can be shut down but 
solar panel still it uh, produces the electricity in this condition cables from the roof to inverter will still be under high tension so that will affect the system so these are some drawbacks of string inverters so we can go for micro inverters and power optimizers so these are the two solutions for the drawback so instead of using the string inverters we can use either micro inverters or dc power optimizers so if you are using dc power optimizers and on inverters we can solve that problem the micro inverters install under every solar panel and converts dc to ac so uh, under every solar panel we can install the micro inverters every micro inverter connected to grid independent from other micro inverters so shading of one panel will not affect other panels due to the presence of micro inverters when one panel gets affected it will not affect the performance the right voltage is found through a technique called maximum power point tracking so this is another research topic so if you are using mppt right voltage can be found when power fails the micro inverter slow down and stop feeding the power into cables okay so that micro inverter is expensive than but Uh, micro inverters slightly expensive compared with your string inverters dc optimizer so this also maintain the efficiency compared with string efficiency string inverter inverters it splits traditional inverters into two products power optimizers and simplified inverters in case of dc optimizer optimizers installed under each panel and turning them into intelligent modules so with the help of intelligent modules we can control independently from affected uh, panels by using panel level tracking and real time adjustments of current and voltage the power optimizers maximize the power output to the optimum working point of each panel due to shading the underperform panels don't affect the output of other panels see so affected only 40 percentage others still getting 90 percentage so no problem during power shutdown in the grid power optimizers reduce the power output of each panel to a low and safe voltage micro inverters and power optimizers are module level power electronics actually some more research topics actually nowadays a uh, lot of research going on to power the solar power road but it has some disadvantages also we have to use very thick solar roads so that the vehicles can go through that one and with the help of leds the line can be drawn and the signals also with the help of uh, install the led lights you can give the signals right side left side red color yellow then green color like that so more research works are going on to install the solar power roads then non filtered light can be blocked with the help of color filters so that is another research area light intensity sensors with the help of light intensity sensors can sense the coloring and uh, which one is suitable for producing more electricity so using this one we can increase the power production if you analyze the coloring of the lights then how to avoid overheating of solar panels say if was zero degree celsius means more current and if the temperature increases the rating reduces voltage rating reduces and current rating also reduces so how to avoid overheating of solar panels another research area 
then solar cells based on peroxide cells a broad category of compounds characterized by a certain arrangement of their molecular structure could provide dramatic improvements in solar installation so lot of improvements due to the presence of the peroxide cells so this is actually recent topic february 2020 topic still research is going on if you are really interested in solar panels you can go this type of research area then photovoltaic power sensors for internet of things so that also another research area planning how to plan for installing the solar power plant actually initially you two members are there in your family so for them only 675 kilowatt hour is enough after some years due to the presence of children it uh, increased to 737 kilowatt hour usage after that certain time we use fridges like uh, some additional electrical appliances then the usage of electricity increases to 998 kilowatt hour after certain time also increases to 1657 and if you are using solar solar cars electric cars means still the requirement is increased in future definitely you see uh, all the people will go for the electric vehicles of solar panel and so you can go for solar it's in future advisable so with this we concluded today's topic i hope you understand the topics and how to design a mini solar power plant actually our mass industry also planning for more solar power installation and encouraging the green house green energy la so the due to the presence of solar panels we can reduce the green house green emission gases so due to that one and government recent government also encourages the institutions to install the solar panels or to generate solar power plants okay so once again i thank mass university and fx engineering college for giving me the opportunity thank you very much just an opportunity to say wow and thank you for our great work honorable chairman managing director and general manager development it's my privilege to be have been asked to propose a vote of thanks in front of you on behalf of our triple department i must mention our deep sense of thanks to all the workers who can coordinate this webinar in a successful manner first of all i would like to thank our coordinator for organizing this event in a grand success next i would like to thank our principal for encouragement and support next i would like to thank our beloved hachodi dr p anapandi for organizing this event in a grand success next i would like to thank all the participants who can spend your valuable time with us thank you all for your participants thank you last but not the least i must mention our hearty thanks to mr k kasi rajan the word you put out this session was excellent surely we can promise user we can implement this in our future scenario thank you